Today, we're gonna to talk about coding boot camps versus self-taught versus computer science degrees and which one's right for you. Before we begin, and if you're looking for your first software development job, I've laid out the five steps to getting that first job. It's codeofrunning.com slash job roadmap. In there, we're talking about interview skills, what language to learn, building a portfolio, and working with recruiters. So if you're interested in getting that first software job, go to codeofrunning.com slash job roadmap. So there's a lot of confusing information about a lot of these programs that are out there and a lot of different ways to learn. So I thought I would take a minute to describe like what each type is so that when I reference them later on that you'll know what I'm talking about. The first way that we learn how to code or enter into software development jobs is using college or traditional college. We call these computer science degrees or CS degrees. So when I talk about getting a CS degree or going to college, I'm kind of talking about the same way. However, they're not all the same. There are about three ways that you can do this. There's a two-year program where you can go to your local community college and get your associate's programming degree. And in that, you will learn some coding, you will learn some technology, you'll learn about databases, you'll learn how to build websites, you'll learn all of these kind of things in a two-year cycle. There's also the four-year program or the traditional computer science degree. And that's a four-year program where you'll learn similar things that you do in the two-year program, but there's a lot more liberal arts education surrounding this degree as well. You may also have something like a capstone or some kind of larger project at the end of this to demonstrate knowledge. And then you can always go from there into the master's program. And in the master program, it's Traditionally, you'll learn more about fundamentals or more computer science things, and you'll have some more project-based work to do instead of just structured around a particular class. But when I talk about going to college, I'm really including all three of those. And I know they're not all equal, but when we're talking about the traditional way to learn, going to a college, getting a degree, getting a computer science degree, that's kind of what I'm talking about. The second one that um, has been around for a while is self-taught learning. So a lot of, you may not know this, but a lot of programmers are self-taught. Um, because we didn't go to computer science or the things that we learned in computer science degrees weren't necessarily what was relevant in the marketplace. So where the computer science, they're teaching things, um, they're teaching things, all the basics and everything you need to know, that doesn't change a lot, but then the languages, the tooling and the other things that do change a lot. And that's where you'll find a lot of people at Unimity, Udacity, learning these new new languages, new frameworks, new tooling, whatever, online and learning and teaching themselves how to code that way. And a lot of people are foregoing the college and just doing the online route, and that works as well. Now, the most popular one now that everyone seems to be either hating or loving right now is talking about coding boot camps. Now, coding boot camps came out in around 2012 in the recent history. Coder Founder came out in 2014, last five years ago. And what we did when we started our boot camp is we saw a definite need in the marketplace to find more people who could code on the things that we needed to do tomorrow. And we were seeing CS degrees come out while smart, very well trained. They're not necessarily always relevant to what I needed to do tomorrow. So coding boot camps rose to teach things that are more closer to what employers want. Now, what I'm talking about coding boot camps is this: going to a place, a location, sitting in a chair, and seeing live instruction. So in person and going in immersive training, which means that you go eight hours a day, sometimes nine hours a day, five days a week for an extended length of period of time, typically 12 weeks. So you're gonna code about six to 700 hours. The other thing that we do that's different from college is that we focus on one thing and one thing only, is training you how to write code. We focus on one stack and building a portfolio and projects that you can show an employer. So it's closely aligned with what employers want to see. So you're probably thinking to yourself, which one is the best way to do this? Which of these methods that I laid out is the best way to get a coding job? And you're probably thinking, I know you own a boot camp. You're going to say the boot camps are the best. Well, let me lay it to you straight. All three work. And how do I know this? Well, I've also run a consulting company and I've hired people. It matters on the individual and what you know when you apply and when you interview for the job. So they all three work, they clearly do, and don't let anyone tell you different. So let's talk about me. How do I know that this works? Well, I have a degree, okay? I've also been completely 100% self-taught because I came through the 90s and web exploded in 97. No one, there was no class that taught that. So we had to learn that on our own. And I've also been to boot camps. I've taken the one week course in Unity, the one week course in C Sharp. I've done a lot of those things. And all of those activities lead me out to where I'm at today. My son who got a CS degree also went to a boot camp as well. 
because I felt like that was the best way for him to get a capstone course on top of his CS degree to align him with industry. So not only have I hired for all three methods, I've used all three methods, and I own a boot camp that teaches one of the methods that we talked about. So I feel like I know exactly the situation that you're in, and then in the case of which one works best for you, they all three work. Don't let anyone tell you different. With that said, I'm gonna lay out the program or the learning path that best fits your goals and your skills. And that's what we're gonna do here in a minute. A lot of people beat up on CS grads or they beat up on boot camps, or they beat up on online. And the reason they do this is because I learned this way, therefore the other two ways must be invalid. And I don't think that's entirely fair. So don't listen to all the noise that says, hey, you must take this class at this computer science school or you're worthless. Don't believe that at all. Don't believe the hype. All three are working because all three are getting hired and getting jobs. They just learned how to do it a little bit differently. What I'm gonna do is show you which is the best way for you to match your skills, your goals, your situation in your life right now. Okay, let's take a little bit of a breather and just think about it. I know with the title to a video, boot camps versus computer science degree versus online can be very divisive. And people can probably leave comments and say that their way is the best. But I want you to think about one thing for a second. Think about the time in which we live where literally everyone in the world that knows how to code is pretty much employed. We are pushing code all over the planet, which means that if you live in India, you can have a job, Costa Rica, the Philippines, Africa, Russia, Europe, and obviously in the United States. It is truly a worldwide phenomenon that impacts everyone. We are outsourcing to all of these other countries. And you know what we don't care about? We don't care where you learned or how you learned because A, we don't know. We have no way to evaluate those. The only way we can evaluate it is if you can make our product or service work. And that, my friends, is what I call the economic mobilizer. And that means that if you know how to code and you're committed to your craft, you will always have a job. In the U.S. specifically, you can work in any state, in any city, at any time, which means you'll make more money than most people do in the U.S. because you know how to code. And second, you can target specific areas. If your wife is moving somewhere or your husband's moving somewhere and you need to go there, you simply call your recruiter on the phone, get an interview, and then you're working in that city or that town. If you're in a dead-end job or you're working for a boss you don't like, you call your recruiter and you move to a new one. So you can be mobile in your pay, mobile in your location, and mobile inside of your job, which means no longer are you stuck with working for a bad company or a person you can simply move. And this movement is across the world. And that, my friends, is the economic mobilizer. And I just want us to sit back just for a second in the time in which we live and how unique and how prosperous we can all be because we know how to code. So now that we've talked about the opportunities that coding provide, let's talk about the differences between the three ways you can learn. Now, the primary difference or one of the biggest difference is cost. Now, if you read the news and you look at boot camps, traditionally what they're gonna say is that boot camps are very expensive. Now, I wanna dispel that notion a little bit because when you compare a boot camp to a four-year CS degree, boot camps are relatively inexperienced. Now, let's say that you go to a boot camp and then another person goes to a CS degree. One takes four years, one takes 12 weeks. They both get out and get the same junior web dev job. Which one's more expensive? Obviously, the CS degree is more expensive. Now, you may feel like you learn more about some algorithms or data structure, some kind of fundamentals. You may even attach a prestige label to that degree. You got out of MIT or something like that. Or maybe there's a, a family member, a mom or dad or someone like that, that really wants you to get that four-year CS degree. There is no variety. There is prestige attached to these things. And so that may be warrant the extra cost. But if you, if you look at just the cash outlay, boot camps are way less expensive than college. Now, let's also look at the self-taught online class. And what I mean by this is you got the $10 course or the free course, you're self-teaching yourself and you're assembling your own curriculum so that you can build a portfolio and show that an employer and get a job. That is the least expensive way to learn how to do this. And for some people, this has worked. You have gotten a job based on your self-taught learning. Now, here's the one thing that I want you to be worried about. I want you to worry about online boot camps. Now, an online boot camp is what I'm gonna tell you this, and I know it's controversial, is not a boot camp. A boot camp is when you go somewhere, you sit in a chair, and you learn immersively, which means 
eight to nine hours a day, or in the case of a part-time, you have a significant chunk of time at night. You always have an instructor there, that coach, that mentor, that is by your side. When you get stuck, you can ask a question to, and they can unstick you. When you get discouraged, they can encourage you, and they provide you empathy, support, and to keep you motivated, and to keep the momentum going in your learning journey. And you're gonna succeed more because of that coach or that mentor. An online bootcamp is you watch videos or you watch the lecture, but that instructor isn't there. Now they do, some of them provide mentors or something like that, but it's not the same as a 20 year veteran teaching you how to code and pouring into your life with his experience and his expertise. So what I would say is be very wary of spending bootcamp prices for an online course. And that's the one thing, the one mistake I see a lot of people making that they should not do. The real cost um, when you compare these three types of programs is opportunity costs or time to market or what I like to say, time to paycheck. Those kind of costs aren't really well thought out by a lot of students. So think about this, a boot camp will take you 12 weeks before you get your first job. If you look at a CS degree, a four year degree or a master's degree, that could be four to six years four to six years before the paycheck or three months before the paycheck. And when you even look at online or self-taught, that could be six to nine months if you devote full time. A lot of people spend a year to year and a half to two years learning online before they get the paycheck. That is equivalent to maybe an associate's degree at a local community college. And so the time to market is really important because this is the part where you can get paid. Now, what if you went to a place and you got your boot camp, you got your first job, and then you went back and got your CS degree online, and guess what? Your employer sometimes would even pay for it. And then you're being paid while you're also learning the CS degree, or in some cases, the employer may be paying for the CS degree. So I want you to think about time to market, how quickly I can get to market to get a paycheck as a software developer, and clearly boot camps win that argument. So here's the one thing that no one talks about or no one tells you about the different learning options out there when you're learning how to code. Um, they don't talk about completion rates. Now, with a boot camp, we're highly regulated by the state that we operate here in the U.S. We're also highly regulated if we have funding from like the VA or the GI Bill or something like that. They closely look at our completion rates and not only completion, but do they get um, employment after the program is over? Now, when you look at self-taught or online, what I talk about, the $10 course, the free version of this, the completion rate is two to six percent. And there's a reason for that because no one's around to encourage you when you get behind or no one's telling you you need to take that next course or do the next lab or the next, next program. No one's doing that. And so you typically drop out because, hey, let's face it, life happens, expenses happen, things happen, and that two percent two to six percent completion rate. Now, the online structured boot camps, the one we said that aren't real boot camps, they self-report that they're 50 to 60%. And I think it's the problem is even with live support, 50 to 60% completion rate has a direct correlation to the live coaching, the live teacher that's there in the classroom that keeps you going when you're down. So let's talk about CS degrees. How many people graduate from college after they start it. Well, the one thing you need to know is 28% of the people change degrees inside of the program. So you may start out as a CS grad and then you change your degree, 28% of you will do that. But if you get all the way to the end, how many people graduate college when they start the program? And that's 50 to 60% as well. And I think it correlates directly to the way the content is delivered and the length of time that it takes to get through. So if it takes you four to six years, you're more likely to quit when an expense comes up or something happens in life, you get married, you have a child or whatever, and that delays your learning journey. So now that we've talked about the completion rates for all of the other learning options, it'd be fair to look at Cody Bootcamps and what their completion rates are as compared to the others. Now at Cody Bootcamps, we have a graduation rate or a completion rate of 80 to 85%. And again, I think this goes back to, to the way the content is delivered and the length of time it takes you to get there. And so life is less likely to happen if in 12 weeks than four to six years. And so, of course, our rates are gonna go higher than that because of that. But it's also because of the instructor, the coaching, or the mentoring that drives you to the completion rate. 
Now, the other thing that's driving boot camps as well is regulatory. And so regulatory in the state that we, that we reside in makes sure that our outcomes align with the students. And so we're held to a very high standard that an online course or some colleges really aren't. And so therefore we have to be better because of the regulatory environment in which we exist. But that's okay because we're here to make sure that these people learn how to code and then can get an employable job as a software developer. And it's because of coaching and time to market. So here's my advice is learn fast, learn quick, get paid, get a job, and then pursue some of the longer options after you're doing that. Now we've went over the costs and we've went over the completion rates and all the things about the different ways you can learn. And you're probably thinking, you told me you were going to tell me the best option that I could take. And you're probably thinking he's just going to pick boot camps. After all, I do own a boot camp, but I'm merely not. Here's what I think you should do. I think you should take a free or $10 course on JavaScript. Learn the basic fundamentals of that language, loops, for loops, conditions, if then else, all those kind of things. Do not overlearn. I want you to spend weeks, not months, definitely not a year doing this. And then take that skill that you've learned and apply that into a full-time immersive boot camp. That can be part-time immersive or full-time immersive. Learn from an instructor and get a job after 12 weeks. Then once you're on the job, take your online CS degree. In a lot of cases, your employer may pay for that. They may have education assistance for that. And that way you could get the online CS degree for free. Don't overlearn, go to a boot camp and then get your CS degree online after you're employed. And that is the best top secret way to make the most out of all three of these educational opportunities to produce the best outcome, which is a paycheck working as a developer. So if you're watching this and you still want help in your learning journey and how to become a software developer, go to codefoundry.com slash job roadmap. I lay out the five essential steps you need to get that job as a software developer. But I hope this helped today and good luck and keep coding. <laughs>